All right, Matt Young, Fightful Wrestling here with the one, the only, Eric Bischoff. Eric, thanks a lot for doing this right out of the gate. Um, just, you know, back in Canada, many people will remember you for having brought WCW Nitro to Canada for the first time. Take us back through that experience. What was that like? Just, you know, because WCW had never been in Canada prior to that, correct? Correct. Well, I, I don't know if they'd ever been in Canada before, and I, I don't know. I don't. I certainly don't sure. remember it as a as a lifelong fan. What was it like? It was freaking expensive. I can guarantee. Doing business that. in Canada is really, really difficult. It's difficult because Canada has a very. And by the way, I, I think it's great. I'm not. I'm not being negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they have a very strict uh, immigration process, and some of our guys, some of our talent, had DUIs, driving under the influence. Hundred percent. And things like that on the record, and they just couldn't get into the country. So not only do you have talent that has some of that yeah. in their background, you've got production staff and people like that that had a hard time getting in the country. And did you have to deal with the Athletic Commission too back then? You had to deal with the Athletic Commission. You know, the it's just very difficult. Canada makes it very difficult for producers other than Canadian producers 100%. to produce television in Canada. And I, I understand it and I think it's great, but we have to, when we want to do business in Canada, we have to pay the price. Exactly. All these years later though, you're still out here, you're still doing shows, you're meeting people. What is it that keeps you going? What is it that keeps you coming back to do these events? You know, I've got a book coming out shortly uh, called Grateful and I talk about that very question in that book. And I'll be honest with you, there was a point in time when doing events like this was just not something I was interested in doing. Um, but I did a few, and in doing, in the process of doing a few shows several years ago, I had people coming up and telling me stories about how wrestling was the thing that brought their, you know, them together with their parents, their mom, their dad, their brothers, their sisters, their uncles, whatever. And when you hear stories about how much of an impact wrestling has had on people's lives, and you hear it over and over and over again, it changed the way I looked at going to Your events. Your viewpoint would change Because I, I don't want to sound like I'm putting myself over, but when you have a chance to meet people and have a big impact on their life and make them feel better, sometimes feel better about themselves, or just feel important, that's a blessing. So now I just look at it a different way, and I enjoy doing it. Yeah, it's not something that everybody gets to do in their life at all, right? So. Think about that, too. You know, I'm 67 years old. I'll be 68 next, next spring. And I still get to go out a couple times a month and do what I'm doing. And that, that's, again, that's not to sound overly spiritual, but that's a hell of a blessing, right? I mean, like you said, how many people get to do that? A lot of the kids, kids, the guys that I grew up with and went to high school and college with, and, you know, they're sitting around watching football, thinking about the good old days, and here I am in Niagara meeting wrestling fans having a blast, so I'm good with it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Now, you got your podcast, 83 Weeks, mm -hmm. uh, very good podcast. I've listened to it quite a bit. It's one myself. of the best, but yeah, continue. Uh, definitely one of the best. I'll, I'll put you over on that one. But, well, if you don't, I will. <laughs> exactly. So it doesn't matter. That's true one enough. One of us is going to put but me over. What, what made you start that? What, what got you into that? Into that? And you know, just how much work is that every week? Do you, it's not do, a lot of work, brother. Do, do you just go off of memory? For the most part. Now, I don't do a lot of prep for the show because I've, I have in the past, and I've found when I do a lot of prep, like when I know what the questions are going to be before somebody asks me the question, I'm already thinking about the answer, right? Yeah. It's not as authentic or spontaneous. Fair. But Conrad, my partner, does do a lot of research. Oh, he does And we've got uh, Derek Sabato does all the research for all of our shows. So he, he gives the notes to Conrad. Conrad goes over them. They send them to me. Sometimes I look at them, but nine times out of ten I don't. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. Sometimes you got to have your own method, right? And that's if that's well, I just believe in being as authentic, authentic and real, and not rehearsed. Now, okay, you've you know you've been doing this forever, like 25 plus years or so, right? Mm -hmm. You've worked everywhere. What is it in the business today that you see and you just you shake your head at and you're like, I don't like it. What's changed well, about it that you don't? I, like? I don't. <sighs> 
what's changed? I, I think the emphasis on physical performance is much greater than it was in the past, which I think is great. However, character and story have suffered. So there, there's so much emphasis put on, you know, high flying, super athletic, holy shit, or this is awesome. Trying to get the chant. Trying to get the chant, and that's cool, and I get it, and it's fun, but when you sacrifice story and characters in order to achieve that, I think it hurts the product in the long run. I, mean, and I think that's one of the things that's suffering from now. Now, do I get mad about it? No, I don't really care. I just notice it. You know, I'm not in the business anymore, so I don't have any, as we say in the States, we don't have a dog in that hunt. But it's obvious to me. Now, you know, again, hearkening back to your management days, you look at something like what's happened in AEW with CM Punk, the young, the Bucks, and, you know, Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page. How would you have handled that if you were in the spot of Tony Khan? Would you, like, to me, I feel like there's a massive disconnect there and a huge opportunity to make money off of this. Well, I don't know if you can make money off of it because now the, the, the and I don't know a lot about, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to comment on it just because there's so much I don't know. That's fair. Right? Um, from what we all know, because I don't know any more than you all do, you know, watching from the outside, there's a lack of leadership you know when you've got that much turmoil amongst that many different people and it's manifest to, to your audience and you've got talent that you're paying millions and millions and millions of dollars to and they're coming out and they're showing their ass in a national media scrum and calling out the owner of the company and calling out other people in the company to me that that's a reflection of, on leadership or lack thereof. Um, how would I handle it? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, would, I wouldn't have put myself in that position to begin with. If you remember, you may not have paid any attention, but I, I made a comment one day, months before all that went down, I said, CM Punk's gonna be the biggest flop, in the biggest financial flop in the wrestling business. I do remember seeing you saying And it that. stirred up all kinds of stuff. You know, Tony Khan's hair caught on fire, and he was babbling like a fucking idiot. Eric's just know, trying to sell so podcasts. About it. <laughs> And uh, three months later, here we are. So I wouldn't have put myself in that position. Fair enough. You know, I, I do have to ask, Tony Khan obviously said some things about some of your thoughts on his product and matches having to mean everything. Like every match should have a meaning to it, mm -hmm. not just the... But he, he, this week on Busted Open, he said they're incendiary, contradictory, and hyper, hypothetic, hyp, sorry, hypocritical, hypocritical. hypocritical on the point. What are your thoughts on, on that? Do you, do you even care at this point what I he think, thinks? I think what Tony says is funny because he reminds me of a 15-year-old kid that's got too much money and doesn't know what to do with it and is just running, <laughs> running around bouncing off walls trying to make some sense out of stuff. Um, look, I never said that every match on every show needs to have a story. But your top three or four should. Definitely. And I encourage Tony, who has an employee by the name of Kevin Sullivan, who is was formerly a director uh, in TNA. We do know who he is, yeah. <laughs> not, not the booker. He's got a, okay. Not the booker. Okay, different guy. Not, not yeah. There's okay. two different Kevin okay. Sullivans. And Kevin Sullivan, the producer uh, and the director, uh, works for Tony. And Kevin Sullivan has a show Bible that I created for um, Spike TV, Viacom, yeah. back when I was there. I would encourage Tony to look at that because it really illustrates to someone who's never done it before how you make sure your A story, your B story, your C story, your D story all have structure and all carry out over a period of three to four months. And then your stories that are underneath that, your opening matches, your mid-card matches, where you're introducing new talent or trying to establish talent that is yet to be established, they don't necessarily need to have a backstory. You can just bring people out and showcase them. That's fine. As long as you've got legitimate story and well-structured story for your top four matches. That's what I've said all along. But... Tony has a tendency to just ricochet off walls and say stupid shit because he doesn't really understand much about the industry, really. He just, he's a wrestling fan with a lot of money. It's a, it, it's a $100 million vanity project. Good for him. I mean, who wouldn't want to be Tony Khan? 
who wouldn't want to have a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars to go play in whatever sandbox you want to play in. And of course, you're not going to want to be criticized for people that have done it before, but that's just human nature, I guess. That's just the nature of the beast, absolutely. Well, Eric, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I know you want to get to catering and have some food before I'm the show. I'm in catering. I've already eaten. So I certainly that appreciate it. That whole thing it. about catering is just nonsense. I just, I have, not, not from you, but you know, <laughs> the rumor is that, you know, when I was in WWE, all I ever did was sit in catering. You know? Oh, here we go. <laughs> but, but, but I will admit, WWE did have good catering. However, the catering here, I ain't shitting you guys. The catering here is pretty good. That barbecue chicken is the bomb. It is very good in this It building. is the bomb. And that pasta, come on now. That's, that's, and the vegetables taste more like vegetables than any vegetables I've had in a long time. So No, the catering here catering is, is actually excellent. very, very good here in St. Catharines at the Meridian Center. Well, again, Eric, thank you so much for taking the time, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. All right, buddy. Thank, thank you. you. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. I travel a lot. I'm on that unsecured Wi-Fi. When I'm on the plane, when I'm uh, at the airport, when I'm at the hotel, NordVPN.com slash Fightful helps me stay safe and secure. And I can change my virtual location with just one click. So if I'm across the country, I can change my virtual location and get access to all the shows that I'm already paying for. But not just that. I can get pay-per-views much more affordably, a lot of content more affordably, with a wider array of content, thanks to that ability to change my virtual location with just one click with NordVPN.com slash Fightful, and it works on all my devices, whether it be a laptop, desktop, PC, router, TV, NordVPN.com slash Fightful has you covered, and we have you covered with a 30-day money-back guarantee on top of four months free. On top of that great service, the fastest VPN in the world, three great tiers, nordvpn.com slash Fightful.